This is basically a complete remake from my original Downfall of Mitsubishi series. I had this idea in my mind for a while, as I wasn't entirely happy with my original attempt at covering this topic. This time, I will try to compress this topic as much as possible, so that it's easy to follow everything. For me as a Mitsubishi fanboy, it was a passion project, where I really wanted to make sure that everything is as correct as possible. I hope you'll enjoy. Asian manufacturers and rallying have a long and rich history. Toyota have a very huge amount of success during their troubled history, including the cheating scandal in 1995, the withdrawal from WRC to focus on their failed F1 project, and so on. But you mostly identify Toyota with winning championships and dominating the current Rally 1 era. Subaru are synonymous with Colin McRae's time driving for the blue Imprezas, becoming famous for his hard and spectacular driving style. And don't forget Petter Solberg's flamboyant style and his amazing talent. Richard Burns, who has won the championship in 2001, needs to be remembered as well. A hell of a driver and probably mostly known for his time there. And so on. Sadly, Subaru have struggled to compete with its rivals from 2006 onwards and pulled out of the WRC after 2008, thanks to the financial crisis. But there was another Japanese manufacturer having a long history in rallying and they were able to challenge their big rival Subaru for a very long time, winning four drivers' championships in WRC between 1996 and 1999 in the hands of Tommy Mackinnon and won manufacturer's title in 1998. Sadly, their competitiveness didn't last long, as they quickly turned from frontrunners to backmarkers, fighting with the likes of Hyundai and Skoda for a small amount of points. But why did that happen? And could this have been prevented? Let's dive into the history of Mitsubishi and rallying, and let's find out why the Japanese manufacturer could retain their dominance. Mitsubishi's history in international rallying began all the way back in 1967, when they participated in the Southern Cross Rally with the Colt 1000F, and in 1972 they have won their first ever rally thanks to the power of their Galant 16L GS and the driving talents of Andrew Cohen, who would later be a key member of Mitsubishi's success. When the World Rally Championship, or in short WRC, was formed in 1973, privateer Joguna Singh entered the Safari Rally as a privateer, using the Galant. A year later, Singh would return to the Safari using the then brand new Lancer 1600 GSR. But the oil crisis nearly ended his hopes in this event, but thanks to his dedication and with the help of Mitsubishi Motors, Singh won the rally, taking his and Mitsubishi's first WRC victory. By 1977, they have tasted some success with the Lancer, taking several victories with Cohen and Singh. They took a break from WRC until they returned in 1981 with the Lancer EX2000 Turbo. It wasn't a big success, however, as even through they finished third in the 1000 Lakes Rally 1982, they finished four minutes behind the winning Audi Quattros, who were revolutionizing rallying with their four-wheel drive technology. Thus, after 1983, the Lancer was not used anymore. A planned return to WRC with the Starion four-wheel drive turbo was cancelled after the tragic death of Henry Toivonen and Sergio Cresto in Corsica 1986. Rest in peace. By 1988, they returned to WRC using the Mitsubishi Galant VR4, adjusted to the Group A rules, which replaced the Group B class permanently from 1987 onwards. The Galant would win its first rally in the hands of the Swedish driver Mikael Eriksson in the 1000 Lakes rally in 1989, and another one would follow in the RSC thanks to Penti Aikila. But they would make a wave when they introduced their Mitsubishi Lance Evolution Group A car for the 1993 WRC season. Their first full year of the Evil One showed some promise for future years. Kenneth Eriksson match who set the first ever fastest stage time in Portugal and newly reported driver Armin Schwartz scored the car's first podium in Greece. Ericsson would earn one more podium in the RSC rally after a puncher and had all hopes of winning. 
This rhythm continued in 1994, where they would continue setting faster stage times wherever they could. For the Acropolis Rally, Mitsubishi introduced the Lance Evolution 2 as a replacement for the EVO 1. Schwartz would give the car its first podium in Greece, whilst Ericsson retired. In New Zealand, Schwartz and Ericsson finished 3rd and 4th, proving that the car and the team might have potential for the future. This year also saw the debut of Tommy Mackinnon in a Mitsubishi at the San Remo Rally. At this stage, Mitsubishi really hasn't committed to a full WRC program just yet, as they also took part in the Asia Pacific Championship at the same time, winning some events as well, but always missing out on the championship. For 1995, they finally took part in tarmac events. Whilst Mackinnon would compete in most of the rallies, Ericsson would only do the gravel events, in which he won two of them. Mackinnon, meanwhile, would win no rallies, but his potential was clearly noticeable. And with the introduction of the Lance Evolution 3, it looks like Mitsubishi might be the ones to watch. In 1996 saw Mitsubishi finally committing for a full WRC program with Mackinnon being their number one driver. Alongside him, a variety of drivers took the second seat, including new signing Richard Burns, who came from Subaru. After winning 5 out of 9 rallies this season, Tommy would claim Mitsubishi's first ever WRC Drivers' Championship. But it was not enough to beat Subaru in a Manufacturers' Championship, finishing in second place. 1997 saw a major change in the WRC format. Now, the calendar included 14 rallies, which all counted towards both championships. Furthermore, the FIA introduced a replacement for the Group A rules, the so-called World Rally Cars. Those rules enabled manufacturers to build and enter cars purposely designed for rallying without having to homologate special models. Whilst Ford and Subaru immediately jumped ship to the new WRC rules, Mitsubishi continued using the Group A rules. The new Lance Evolution 4 gave them another boost and after a close fight with Subaru rival Colin McRae, Mackinnon won the title again, while Burns participated in 8 rallies in their second car as Mitsubishi still didn't fully commit to the Manufacturers Championship. This all changed in 1998. The season started poorly for Tommy, as he only finished 1 out of the 4 opening rounds, winning the rally Sweden. Burns, meanwhile, would score his first win at WRC at the Safari that year. With the introduction of the Group A Lance Evolution 5, Mackinnon started a thrilling comeback. With four rallies left to go, his gap to championship leader Carlos Sainz was 13 points. But he would win the next three rallies to take the lead in the championship, two points ahead of Sainz prior to the finale in Wales. However, it looked like all the effort was worthless. After he retired on day one, after he crashed his Lancer because he wasn't notified of oil on the road. Science just had to cruise to the finish, but in typical Toyota fashion, 500 meters until the end, Saito's Corolla stopped. The engine was gone. No one could believe what they saw. And finally exploded. Not only did Mackin win the title, thanks to this unfortunate retirement for Science, but Mitsubishi also won their first ever manufacturer's championship after Burns won the Wales Rally GP in his final outing for the team before moving to their rival Subaru again from 1999 onwards. As a replacement, Mitsubishi have signed a promising Belgian talent named Freddy Loix. His outings in the Toyota Corolla in the past years surely left a mark on all team bosses. This year also saw the introduction of the Lance Evolution 6, another car based on the Group A rules. But even if we have entered year 3 of the World Rally Car rules, no one had an answer to Tommy Mackinnon, as he won his fourth title with superb consistency, winning four events and scoring seven podiums. Loix was not able to claim a podium throughout the season, but he still scored 14 points. However, it was not enough to defend the manufacturer's crown, as Toyota and Subaru surpassed them completely, and things would only get worse in 2000. Continuing with the Lance Evolution 6, Mackinnon would win the Rally Monte Carlo again and he would finish second in Sweden. 
while Sloix scored one point in the Monty. From Kenya onwards, things went downhill. Tommy and Freddy would struggle competing against the other World Rally cars, as the competition have finally fixed most of the reliability issues, plus they found some extra speed to leave the Group A Lancer behind. Throughout the rest of the season, Tommy would only score three more podiums and Freddy would only score three more points. A potential second win for Tommy in Australia was stripped away because the housing of the turbo was different to the one being homologated. At the end, Tommy and Freddy finished the season in 5th and 15th overall. It became clear that the Group A Lancer would only slip further behind the other manufacturers. Work began on their very first road ready car in mid-2000. The car would be based on Lancer Cedia, however, they were years behind in development in comparison to their rivals. Bad times were on the horizon. Mitsubishi continued using the Group A Lancer, now dubbed the Evo 6.5, which included a few parts that could not be implemented in a production car, thus breaking the Group A rules. But, thanks to special permissions by the FIA, the team was allowed to expand the rear suspension mounting position and include a weight reduction for the flywheel. It came with a big cost. They had to debut their World Rally car during the 2001 season. This was a problem, as the car was nowhere ready to be competitive. With the old car, the 2001 season started well. Tommy Mackin won the season open in Monte Carlo after Colin McRae retired on day 3 with a car issue. Tommy then threw away a second place finish in Sweden, being inherited by local driver Thomas Rodstrom, who was nominated for manufacturer's points instead of regular driver Freddy Loix. Tommy then proceeded to win the Rally of Portugal after one of the greatest battles in modern rally history with his 1998 title rival Carlos Sainz. No, seriously, go watch the highlights of that rally. I highly recommend it. The next few rallies went by, and even though he would struggle with the world position, he still scored some decent points. But his title rival McRae has caught up to Mackinnon, thanks to three straight wins in Greece, Argentina and Cyprus. Richard Burns would also make some steady progress, but his newly introduced Super Impressor WRC 2001 was not reliable and costed Richard valuable points early on in the season. Meanwhile, Marcus Grunholm, the Finn driver for Peugeot, who took the 2000 championship, had a torrid season, filled with mechanical woes of his Peugeot 206. In the toughest event of the calendar, the Safari Rally, the Evo 6.5 once again showed its biggest strength, durability. Tommy took his third win of the season, leading the championship ahead of McRae by 10 points. What no one could predict is that it would be Mitsubishi's final WRC win ever and their final podium for a long time. Mackinnon would then suffer an embarrassing DNF in Finland, crashing out on stage 1, following him up with an 8th place finish in New Zealand. His teammate Freddy did slightly better than in 2000, but he was still miles off the pace of Tommy, struggling to adapt to the special driving characteristics of the car, which mostly suited Tommy. So, he was looking for a new ride in 2002. After New Zealand, Mitsubishi retired the Group A Lancer 6.5 for good. Victory in New Zealand thrust Richard Burns back into the championship ahead of Carlos Sainz and Harry Rovenpera, but behind Mackinnon and McRae. This is a rally Mackinnon likes. He's had two wins in the last four years, but after a second successive rally without any points, he's starting to feel the pressure. And that's not all he's got to contend with, because here Mitsubishi launched their new Lancer Evolution World Rally car. Round 11 of the championship took place in San Remo, Italy, a tight and twisty asphalt rally where the asphalt ace Gil Panizzi was the favourite to win. A young talent named Sebastian Loeb made his WRC debut in the Citroen. Surely he won't do much in the future, right? But the main attention went to the much awaited debut of the new Mitsubishi Lance Evolution World Rally car. It was a make or break car for Tommy Mackinnon. If this car was not good, Mackinnon was considering leaving the team after the season. It would be nice to continue with them, of course, but it, of course it would be nice to, nice to see something else also. I think if I will continue another two, two years, I think it's the uh, last chance now to, to move somewhere if I want to do it. So off we go to the first stage, with Mac and Ray to show how competitive the new car is, as he passed through the tight roads of San Remo and he will finish the stage only 11th. His teammate Ferry Loix wouldn't fare much better though, starting off his rally from 24th. 
and things wouldn't get better. Both drivers suffered from transmission issues throughout the rally, and even when the issues were fixed, they were just hopelessly slow. On stage 19, Mackin retired from the rally after damaging his suspension, leading to his retirement. Friday's rally ended in P12, a disappointing result. Next up was Corsica, where the car didn't show any improvements at all. Yeah. Our second round was so short, it was no time to do enough. The balance is absolutely gone. It is car is disaster. It, it is very, very difficult to do. Very, very difficult to drive. It's doing everything. Beginning, it's a little bit understeering, and then it starts oversteering. <laughs> it's, it's, it is, it's strange. Loix immediately suffered a puncture on stage 1, already destroyed any hopes of fighting for the top 10. Mackinnon was complaining on how heavy and slow the car felt, but by stage 3, there was some glimpse of hope that things were looking better, as he finished the stage in 5th place. But on stage 5, disaster struck. But 18 kilometers into stage 5, all that became academic. Mackinac clipped the wall on the right, slammed into the cliff on the left and flipped upside down. With smoke pouring from the wreckage, fans rushed to help Mackinac and his co-driver Risto Madison Mackey, who was still stuck in the car. This crash would end Risto Madison Mackey's career as a co-driver and would injure Mackinac's back. After that shock, Loix fought hard on recovering from his poor day one and eventually finished the rally in 12th. But the main importance was that Tommy and Risto survived. Timo Hanton would step in for Madison Mackey to be Tommy's co-driver for Australia. It would be the Lancer at WRC's first gravel event and things weren't really improving, as Tommy struggled with his new co-driver, his back and with his car. Somehow, he still managed to fight for 6th place throughout the event, which he ultimately would achieve, scoring his first and only point with the new car. For Freddy, this really was yet another disappointment, as he could not challenge his teammate and with time penalties, he will finish in 11th. At this point, Mackin already lost the championship lead to Colin McRae, who could have sealed the title earlier, but the real selection process for the starting position meant that he ultimately finished in 5th. And now, Richard Burns returned to the championship battle after a strong Australian rally, finishing in 2nd place. Before the season finale in Wales, Mitsubishi have completed a 4-day test in the hopes of somehow fixing some of the issues with the car. Unfortunately, all these efforts were unsuccessful, as Tommy retired on stage 2 after clipping a stone, thus destroying the suspension, and Freddy retiring on stage 10 with a gearbox issue. That meant that Mackin lost a shot at the 5th championship, which ultimately went to Burns, and Mitsubishi dropped to 3rd in the manufacturer's championship. But for 2002, things were looking even worse. For 2002, the team had to find new drivers. Tommy Mackin has left Mitsubishi, and joined their biggest rival Subaru, and Freddy Loix went to Hyundai. If you want to learn more about Hyundai's first attempt in the WRC, check out this video from Tai I can highly recommend it. Driving the Lancer WRC in 2002 are Frenchman Forza Delacour, who came from Ford, and Alison McRae, who came from Hyundai. A third car was prepared for the Finn Yanni Parsonen, who has showed glimpses of potential as a privateer. Unfortunately, all of these changes wouldn't improve Mitsubishi's season, as 2002 would be their worst season yet. They were nowhere in Monaco pace-wise, but showed a lot of promise in Sweden, where Parsonen ended day one in the points, but bad luck and some mistakes from his part ruined his rally. This, however, has opened the door for McRae to finish this rally in a fine fifth place, after Loix and Kenneth Eriksson suffered technical problems on the final day, and Colin McRae, who beached his car in the snowbank, couldn't catch him earning his and Mitsubishi's first points of the season. It would remain their only top 6 result of the season, as the driver suffered from the poor performance of the car. Delacour would score 3 manufacturer's points in the next rallies in France and Spain, but it only happened because cars ahead of him didn't score any manufacturer's points at all, for example the Citroën drivers or one of the Peugeots, mostly Marcus Gronholm. The next event, Cyprus, would see McRae rolling his Lance WRC spectacularly on day one. Sadly, you don't earn points by crashing your car in the cleanest fashion, and later he would retire with engine issues. He would, however, score a manufacturer point in Kenya, finishing the rally in ninth, 
but seeing as three cars ahead of him were not eligible for Manufacturer's Championship, Mitsubishi would earn another point. The sad truth about that result is that McRae was the last place factory driver in this event, struggling with pace and technical issues throughout the event. Fun fact, even in time specialist Gio Panizzi, driving a fourth Peugeot, would finish ahead of McRae in sixth. From the Rally Finland onwards, the Lancer WRC was upgraded to the Lancer WRC2. Key improvements were a new front bumper, adjustments to the cooling system for better cooling between the brakes and the engine, a new engine transmission layout for a better center of gravity, a new turbo and new exhaust layout, and it included some changes in the transmission to make life easier for Delacour McRae, who couldn't adjust to the driving style Mackinnon had, who required an aggressive left foot braking technique. Moreover, the suspension was allowing for more travel and rigidity. With those changes, the team was hoping for more improved results. But things wouldn't improve at first. The Finn Yanni Parson returned for Finland and was the highest placed Mitsubishi driver in 8th. The next two rallies were held on tarmac, which particularly suited Delacour. In Germany, he had a decent rally. He would endure a strong second day where he even secured the second fastest stage time on one stage and it briefly looked like he could score some points, but in the end he dropped down to 9th, only scoring one manufacturer point. Before San Marino, Alistair McRae would be involved in a motorbike crash, suffering from some injuries in the process. He would still attempt in the rally, but he forgot to secure the bonnet after some checks after stage 1, and on stage 2, the bonnet opened in the middle of the stage. The team later withdrew Alistair from the event, and he would not return for the rest of the season. Delacour would suffer from turbo and brake problems during the rally, but would still finish in the top 10, and would once again score a manufacturer point in the process. The next rally would be in New Zealand. Yanni Parson was back, standing in for the injured Alison McRae, and his rally started extremely well. For the first time since Kenya 2001, a Mitsubishi car would win a stage thanks to Parson's stunning performance on day one. But unfortunately, his rally and Mitsubishi's stream of scoring some important points for the championship ended when Yanni overshot a turn and terminally damaged his Mitsubishi. His rally was over. And because Delacour had no pace throughout the event, the team once again scored no points. Whilst New Zealand showed some flashes of speed, its promise would carry over to the final two events. Delacour would suffer a high-speed crash in Australia, which resulted in his co-driver Daniel Gratterloop suffering career-ending injuries. Yali Parson, meanwhile, had an anonymous rally, finishing outside the points again. For the season finale in Wales, a third car was prepared for the Brit Justin Dale, but it didn't help them at all. Dale retired on stage 3 after damaging his Mitsubishi in an accident, whilst Parson and Delacour both retired on day 2 on the same stage in two separate accidents. At the end of the season, Mitsubishi was ranked 6th and last in the Manufacturers Championship, being overtaken by Skoda and Hyundai in the final two rallies. McRae was the only driver to score points in the Drivers' Championship, being classified at dismal 15th, scoring two points less than in 2001. As a result of the disastrous 2002 season, Mitsubishi have decided to take a sabbatical year to restructure their organization and to focus on the 2004 Challenger. At first, Mitsubishi acquired Andrew Coven Motorsports and then followed it up by the formation of Mitsubishi Motors Motorsports, in short MMSP, based in Trebor, Germany, in November of 2002, meaning that MMSP has taken over the operation of Rally Art Europe. Taking over the position as a team boss would be the German Sven Quant, who came in with a lot of experience in the rallying world, being a formal driver himself. Kovo, meanwhile, would remain at Mitsubishi as a consultant. Chief Engineer Bernard Lindauer was sacked and was replaced with Mario Fernagas. He had two options, continue refining the current Lancer WRC2 or start development from scratch. He chose the latter option as he was convinced that this would be the right thing in the long-term future. Mitsubishi used the whole year of 2003 to develop their new car for the 2004 season. In the meantime, Mitsubishi also competed in selected rallies as part of a development program. For that, they used their flopped EVO WRC2 in those events, scoring 3 points in New Zealand thanks to the fully recovered driver Alison McRae. But unfortunately for him, he wouldn't be retained for the comeback in 2004. Neither were Delico or Parsonen, as the team decided to sign a Frenchman, Gio Panizzi, as their lead driver. Panizzi 
was coming from Persia, where he gained a reputation as the Tarmac King, running all of his seven rallies on Tarmac. He became unsatisfied with the development of the 206 and decided to go for a new challenge. A second car was prepared for a variety of junior drivers, including the Spaniard Danny Sola, Finland's Christian Solberg, and the Italian Gianluigi or Gigi Galli. All of them participated in the production WRC class in the past, with a variety of success. On the 27th of November 2003, at the Essen Motor Show, Mitsubishi have finally revealed their 2004 Challenger, Mitsubishi Lance Evolution WRC 04. The car ditched nearly everything from its predecessor, except for the engine. The WRC 04 included a 5-speed gearbox with no semi-automatic gear shift, passive differential and an extreme rear wing. Most of the features had to be simplified because of time constraints, as they had to rebuild the whole car. But over the season, the car would be improved step by step, so we should expect some better results in the future, right? The 2004 season kicked off the Monte Carlo, and perhaps a bit surprisingly, Gio Panizzi immediately finished in 6th after the rally, scoring 3 points in the process. Sweden was next, and both Panizzi and Christian Solberg suffered from technical issues, leading to a double retirement. A new gearbox was introduced in Mexico to address the issues from Sweden. Panizzi would finish in the points in 8th, whilst Gigi Galli retired on stage 6 with suspension issues. New Zealand was a big embarrassment for the team, as both Panizzi and Sorberg retired after the super special stages, whilst in Cyprus, both drivers survived day 1 but not day 2, as both would retire with engine issues. Next up was Greece, and Danny Sola would finally make his debut in the WC04, but it wasn't a good debut as Sola retired after a spectacular crash involving the then privateer driver Roman Cresta and him. Panizzi was looking good for scoring more points, but with three stages left to go, the engine nearly died and Gilles dropped down to 10th. In Turkey, Panizzi would retire on stage 4 with electrical issues, whilst Gali suffered some damage after a water splash and had to do some repairs mid-stage. Nevertheless, he finished in 10th overall. Argentina was next, and Gio once again scored points to 7th. Solberg, meanwhile, was showing some strong pace, even being 5th overall at one point before retiring with a gearbox problem. Next up was Solberg's home event in Finland, where he decided it was a good idea to crash his Mitsubishi spectacularly, whilst Panizzi would score no points. In Germany, Sola returned, only to crash out on stage 2, whilst Panizzi would suffer a huge crash, losing control in slippery conditions hitting a tree in the process. They did return for the Spanish rally again, this time entering with three cars, with Panizzi, Gali and Solo driving the improved Lancers. Before the rally has started, team boss Sven Quant was sacked in favour of Isao Tori. Apparently, he was sacked because of differences between the Diamond Chrysler Group and Mitsubishi, so thanks to internal problems, most of the German staff got fired, including Quant. Well then, let's go back to the rally of Spain. Panizzi began the rally strong, but fell back down the order due to a bad tire choice and scored no points. Thankfully for Mitsubishi, Gali and Sola showed some promise and set some strong times, proving that the development phase of the car has gone well. In the end, Gali finished the rally in 6th, while Sola finished in 7th. This season showed that the newly constructed Lancer WRC has some big potential to be a solid and reliable rally car. Maybe in 2005, things will finally fall into the right place, so that the once dominating Japanese mark can taste some success. For 2005, the car was further improved. The now dubbed Mitsubishi Lancer WC05 was widened by 30mm as per the new regulations for this season. Furthermore, the ECU and turbo wastegate was updated, the rear suspension was redesigned and further aerodynamical changes improved the stability of the car. Also, steering mounted gearshift paddles were introduced as well. Their driver lineup was slightly changed. Panizzi remained with the team, but his program was reduced to asteroid rallies and two gravel events. Gigi Gali was also retained, competing in 13 out of 16 rallies for the team. And finally, the Finn Harry Rovampera took over the position as a team leader, competing in all of the rallies. From round 1 onwards, the car showed some promise, as Gio Panizzi finished third, even though he was aided by Peter Solberg and Marcus Grönholm's retirements. 
It was Mitsubishi's first ever podium since their comeback, and their first podium since the Safari Rally of 2001. The next two rallies were solid, with Rolf Impera finishing 4th in Sweden and 5th in Mexico, and Gali finishing 7th in Sweden, and Panizzi scoring another point with 8th in Mexico. New Zealand and Sardinia were in a big success, with Rolf Impera retiring in both, showing some encouraging pace in Italy, fighting for a podium place before retiring with gearbox issues. Gali, meanwhile, only scored one point in New Zealand. Next up was Cyprus, where Rolf Impera finished in 7th, after he used the Super Rally rules to return into competition after stage 12, with Panizzi finishing 10th. In Turkey, Gali was very strong on day 1, even leading for a few stages, but on day 2, turbo issues dropped him down to 8th, with Rolf Impera only finishing in 10th. Both Rolf Impera and Gali finished in 6th and 7th in Greece. Midway through the season, the man behind the Mitsubishi Lancer WC04 and 05, Mario Fonaris, left the team and was replaced by Yasuo Tanaka. Argentina was a solid rally for Harry, finishing it in 5th out of Marco Martin, and in Finland, he finished in 7th. Galli meanwhile performed strongly in Germany, finishing this rally in 5th. At the Wales 12 GB, we sadly lost Michael Park, co-driver of Marco Martin, after a terrible crash on stage 15, hitting a tree co-driver side first. We still miss your beef. Thanks to Grunholz's withdrawal, Rolf Impera finished the rally in 4th, his best results in Sweden. In Japan, the team entered their first ever home event in their long tenure of WRC, with 3 cars, including Gil Panizzi. Harry finished the rally in 5th, whilst Gali retired from the rally, and Panizzi finishing in 11th. Gil's final rally for Mitsubishi was in France, where he would retire with mechanical issues. Mitsubishi once again entered 3 cars in this event, with both drivers, Rolf Impera and Gali, finishing outside of the points. Rolf Impera and Gali once again scored no points in Spain, with Harry being the highest placed Mitsubishi. In the final event of the season, the Rally of Australia, all hell broke loose. Sebastian Loeb and Marcus Grunholm retired on day one, and Petter Solberg's engine let go on day two. All this drama meant that François Duval, who disappointed for most of the season in the Citroën, won this event. Colin McRae, who took part in the Skoda Fabia WRC, was fighting for a podium place before a troubled service led to McRae's retirement. This meant that Armin Schwartz scored his final point in his WRC career before retiring from driving at the end of the year. And what about the Mitsubishis? Well, Gigi Gali had a solid rally, finishing in 5th overall, but Harry Rolf Impera was doing even better. Fighting with McRae for 2nd, Harry managed to gain the upper hand, and after McRae's retirement, he could finally control his pace and finish in second, Mitsubishi's best ever result since Panizzi's third place at the Monte. This season has been a solid foundation for more. Rolf Impera and Gali were showing some potential, setting some very competitive stage times in comparison to the top teams. They were easily doing better than Skoda did in their entire time they were using the Fabia. Unfortunately, the Rally of Australia 2005 was the final event for Mitsubishi as a works entry. In December of 2005, Mitsubishi suddenly announced their withdrawal from the WRC with immediate effect. Originally, they were thinking about returning to the WRC in 2009, but in 2007, they announced that they won't return to the championship anymore. But it didn't mean that no Mitsubishi competed as a privateer entry during this time. In 2006, Daniel Carlsson even scored a podium in the Swedish rally ahead of another Lancer WRC 05, driven by former works driver Gigi Gali. After that, there were a few more entries of Provinci Mitsubishi during the 2006 and 2007 season, with none of the drivers scoring another podium. This means that Carlson's third place in Sweden will remain the final time a Mitsubishi car scored a podium place, and Umo Ava's eighth place in New Zealand in 2007 was the final time a Mitsubishi WRC car scored a point in the championship. After that, the cars were sold to other privateers, and to this day, the Lancers are run in many local championships. But with that, the Mitsubishi Works team was forever gone. So, what exactly went wrong? The biggest issue for Mitsubishi 
was the insistence to stick to the Group A rules for such a long time that the FIA had to force them to switch to the road rally car rules. But why did they stick to these rules for so long? The answer is simple. Money. See, the Japanese brand wasn't the richest company in the world. The Asian economic crisis caused severe budget issues at the company, so that by 1997 a new management was hired to start cutting the costs significantly. This also had an effect on the running program. But their solution seemed to be simple. Thanks to the Group A rules, Mitsubishi could simply develop their rally cars in their technical center in Okazaki, where the passenger vehicles were developed and produced. This cut the cost of development massively and initially it worked. But due to the rise of the world rally cars, Mitsubishi's concept was outdated soon, so a restructuring phase had to happen at some point. And by the end of 2002, it finally had to happen. Then came the drivers. I really don't want to disrespect some of the drivers here, as I'm sure they are all great, but they were not really suited for a top team at the time. Especially in the case of Freddy Loix, you can safely say that both parties wasted their time. Freddy was never able to adapt to the car, whilst Thomas Rodstrom, for example, who only drove to Rally Sweden in 2001 to score manufacturer's points, for example, did. If they had tried to sign a guys like Grunholm, who only did one rally as a replacement for Loix, or tried their hands with guys like Peter Solberg or Marco Martin, things might have looked a bit different for the team. But by 2002, the driver situation became even worse. Signing Delco was good for the experience side, but in all honesty, he was way past his prime, as he hasn't won a rally since 1994 and got outclassed by his four teammates in 2001. Whilst in Alistair's case, I would say that the move came at a very bad time, as he was showing some decent performances in the Hyundai accent, when it didn't break down of course, and also signing Panizzi as the lead driver for 2004 was also not the best idea. He was great on Tarmac, for sure, he is still the Tarmac King WRC, but on Gravel, he wasn't. So he couldn't really give the best feedback on that surface, albeit they probably didn't have a huge selection for the seat. Jeez, imagine they would have gone for Armin Schwartz for that seat. <laughs> this would have been even worse than Delacour. In the end, I can say that even through the current state of Mitsubishi is quite shocking, and far away from the golden age of the Lancer Evos, the GTOs, the FTOs, and even the Mitsubishi Eclipse, the company would do some of the most memorable rally cars ever built, being driven by some of the biggest legends of modern rallying. Those memories will last forever, and I seriously, seriously beg those, this company and even Subaru to return to rallying again. There were rumors that Subaru would return, so maybe they will, but I guess not in a moment. As for Mitsubishi, well, they revived rally art, yeah, yeah, that's cool, but I think Mitsubishi is so far away from return to WRC that Bruce mentioned Gladbach being ever able to win it. Bundesliga Championship again. But until then, when they might come, we have to remember these days. Quote from Sebastian Vettel in 2013. And that's all for this video again, guys. It took quite a while to get it together, to record, to write the script, to collect the footage. It was a huge work. And honestly, I'm quite pr proud of it. So, if you liked that too, then please drop a like and don't forget to comment on this video with your thoughts about Mitsubishi's time rallying, about some of the drivers who have participated for Mitsubishi, about some potential drivers back in the day, and about the future of the company. But until the next video, I guess uh, have a good time and uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully for another one. Bye bye.